Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with some more Total War Warhammer 3 gameplay. We're going to continue with our Laws of Magic series as there's a lot of different magical spells available with the release of Warhammer 3. So we've already looked at the Law of Ice and now it's time to look at the Law of Tempest, the more aggressive of the two Kizavite laws. As always, these values, especially how much each of the individual spells cost, can change, especially with patches, but let's not waste any more time as this is the most aggressive lore and personally my favourite of the two Kislevite ones. We're going to work through all the spells in a clockwise formation as usual, and the first one is Blizzard. This is a vortex spell which has a large explosion area and anything it does damage will also get Frostbite which reduces their speed by 30%. It's fairly expensive but does a lot of damage, and if you decide to then increase it by overcasting, it will increase damage of course, and also increase armor piercing damage too. Keep in mind that this spell needs to be positioned correctly, as it can also harm you, as it pulls pretty much anything within its radius into it and do damage. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show off a clip of this spell in action, and exactly how it works plus its animation, as it's kind of cool. Next we have Biting Wind, which is a rather good wind spell. It's a expanding forward moving area of effect damaging spell, which if positioned correctly, mostly on any enemies that are blobbed up or anything that is kind of ranked in a formation that you know you can get a few different enemies, you can hit them really really hard. Also you can decide to overcast it, which increases its armor piercing damage too. Now the spell itself does quite a bit, I must say. It's probably one of my favorite from the Kislevite laws, and what I'm going to do now is show a clip of you using it multiple times. The first one I wasn't too great at angling but what you can see is that it does travel really really far which means that you can hit a lot of enemies if you plan out your spell correctly. The second time went out a lot better. Next we have Hawks of Miska, and this one is another Vortex spell, but possibly one of the best out there. It moves around a little bit randomly, but it does a lot of damage, discourages your enemies by reducing their leadership, and it does not affect your troops too. This is quite good, as obviously this means that you can blob up your enemies right on you, and you won't have to fear about losing those Zargard that you were waiting a long time to recruit. And finally, if you decide to overcast it, it does a lot more damage. Now, I'm going to show you a clip on pretty much a lot of peasants being surrounding one unit of mine and show you how much damage this really can do. Next we have Hailstorm, a bombardment spell with a medium strike area. It's pretty cheap, which means that you're going to be able to use this a lot, and if you decide to overcast it, it has an extended effect duration and also increased number of missiles. Apologies for the random jump there, my cat decided to swan dive on me. 
This is a spell I've been using often purely because it's cheap and it's able to do quite a decent amount of damage. I'm going to show a clip regarding that very soon. And yeah, it's probably one of those spells that you're going to see a lot of use out of. Next we have Gust of True Flight, another cheap spell which can be further augmented. It's a single unit buff but can be then turned into an area of effect if you then decide to overcast it, which is probably the best way to go. It increases range and accuracy of your range units. Meaning, for example, your Corsars, which have 140 range, then become 180, more or less. Or if you decide to use this to buff up Ice Guard, you can make them rival Elven weaponry. This is pretty good, especially for the future when you have to deal with Elves, but also, you know, being able to fire from a longer distance. Anything that's coming at you, say, for example, a melee base Corne army and so on, you can start to pick them out before they get too close. Overcasting is definitely something that you want to keep doing if you're going to use this and, well, you know, it's Kislev, you're a hybrid faction, pretty much everything you have has range barring cavalry, so you might as well obviously save some Winds of Magic for your attacking spells because those are quite good too, but at least this lore has a lot of different options which allows you to take advantage and plan and strategize quite well. And lastly we have Swift Wing, a augment which affects a whole area, quite cheap too and quite useful as it increases charge bonus by 40% and speed by 25%. This is one of those spells that you might be using a lot, especially if you base around a lot of cavalry heavy stuff because, well, you know, it's kind of linked up to the whole Sabaton meme of the Winged Hazards, so yeah. And if you decide to overcast it, it increases the area of effect too, so you can get much more of your cavalry getting these bonuses. It's good for cavalry. This is pretty much it. But since the Kizavite cavalry isn't too bad, where the, that Spare Riders, that uh, Winged Hazards, Griffin Legion and so on, you've got a lot of cool stuff here to work with. Obviously that depends on your playstyle if you want to use it or not, but I'd say that it's been quite useful, especially if you want to work around the enemy, if they're crashing into your Zargard and you want to smash into them through the rank or rear. The passive trait for Law of Tempest Wizards is Freezing Winds, which reduces enemy speed by 25% in an area effect. It's triggered when your spellcaster is casting and so on, and it's not too much of an issue. You can keep your caster up close and personal if you've got a war bear, like they can take damage, they're quite tanky with a bear. Kinda adds in quite nicely for you to move around your forces and hit them from behind. But with all that being said, I'd say that this is my favorite lore out of the two Kislevite ones. It's just so much better and so less overcosted than say for example the lore of ice. This is just an opinion of mine though and you guys could think something differently. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.